Yeah, I think we can start. So welcome everyone. This is a live session. I think maybe one of the few live sessions on today's uh, Things Stack conference. Uh, very, very happy to be here. My name is Jose Marcelino. I'm a Rack Wireless Solution Architect. Uh, so who is Rack Wireless? Uh, it's a company based in Shenzhen. We've been in the LoRa space uh, from the early days um, when when TTN started, basically uh, six years ago. Uh, we are still a young company, but we've uh, grown quite a lot. We have over 100 staff all over the world, and we cover the whole spectrum of uh, IoT solutions from devices to gateways. Our our Product spectrum, like I said, includes things from down from the modules on the devices themselves to devices and also to our uh, big market, which is gateways. Uh, Rack Wireless is one of the largest now gateway manufacturers. We have shipped over 200,000 gateways. We're looking to ship over 100,000 just this year alone. So we're, we're quite a big manufacturer. Our solutions include uh, the commercial gateways. So these are gateways that are ready to deploy. They are certified. They uh, include management software as well, uh, which I'll uh, explain later. And includes both outdoor and indoor options. So for the this is our existing product line, which is the the Rack seventy two forty nine. This is an outdoor gateway, very robust, all metal. Uh, includes options for eight or 16 channels, and it can connect through cellular as well and run from uh, battery power even. Uh, then we have the 7240, which is our smaller unit for uh, outdoor deployments. This just affects, the slightly affects the, the IP rating. It's IP65 rated, but it's still very uh, widely deployed now around the world. Then finally, we had the indoor gateway, which was the 7258. This is just a, it's a nice plastic box. It's low cost, very efficient. It still has PoE, so it can be used in enterprise networks and includes as well the cellular option in this case. The other product lines for RAC are uh, the developer gateways. So the, these are Raspberry Pi gateways. Uh, which use our concentrator card. We make our own concentrator card. And you, you've got several options there from using the Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3. These are very popular with developers. So you get a full open source stack. You can play around with it. It's, it's Linux, so a lot of many people can know how to use that. Uh, but this this is what we call the developer gateway. So this is ideal for your uh, prototyping, your proof of concepts. And, and some wide deployments where you need some kind of customization of the communication stack. For commercial deployments, our edge gateways are the best option. So these are uh, ready to go, like I said, easy to deploy and include the outdoor options as well. Uh, but today I want to talk about our new product, which is the WizGate Edge Lead 2. This is a very nice, very nice packaged uh, indoor product. Um, it includes all the latest technology. So we use the latest concentrator and our latest uh, board design as well. Uh, it includes 100 megabit ethernet and Wi-Fi options as well as cellular. It also adds PoE, as I mentioned, for all our indoor gateways for commercial users use PoE. So if you have a company you can just deploy this on your PoE infrastructure. Uh, we support multi backhaul, so you can be the gateway can be both on cellular and on uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. So if if like say Wi-Fi goes down, the gateway can automatically switch over to cellular or vice versa. We use OpenWRT software. It is customizable, so you can uh, create your own image if you'd like to add any other extra functionality. We have some clients doing some more complex deployments, uh, like if you need a special Wi-Fi configuration, for example. Of course, we can integrate with the, the Thing stack. This is what I'm going to show you today, how to do that. 
uh, we have an SD card option, which can, you can use to store your logs or also to backup any packets that have arrived for LoRa. So imagine if your downlink goes down, you can record all the packets that were received to the SD card. And then when the gateway later goes back online, you can just, the, the gateway itself will retransmit all the, all the missing packets that have been sent. Uh, then we add, we have an internal network server. It's based on Chirp stack as well. So if you don't, if you're like on a isolated area where you don't have cellular connectivity, you can just use the built-in network server, add your devices to the gateway, and then use MQTT to send it to a local host, for example. And finally, we support LTE on, on all our gateways. It's an optional. So we at, at sale time, you can just choose that option and then you get a nice cellular to, for connectivity. The new thing we're adding now is WizDM. So this is our management platform, remote. So it means your gateway can connect to our cloud management service. And this lets you do awesome things like, just going to skip it over quickly. So you can do over the air updates. You can connect remotely over SSH to the gateway. You can uh, set up your built-in network server and add any devices there as well. Uh, and this is all managed through our cloud systems. And now I'll go quickly to the, to the demo. So how to set this up on the thing stack. So this is uh, your login screen for the gateway. It's in, got a nice web interface. So just log in here. You can see what our log, our interface looks like. You get a nice graphs uh, showing RSSI and SNR, and you got uh, a LoRa packet logger. You get a system log. You get firewall. Lots of options. And what I'll do now is I'll go to here to the LoRa network configuration so to, to set up the thing stack. So from factory, we ship with the packet forwarder enabled. So what you need to do is to switch over to the basic station because basic station is just much, much better than the, the old uh, packet forwarder. So switch mode to that. Then you go to your uh, things uh, stack or in this case, the things network server. Maybe I'll just make this a little bigger so you can see it. Okay. Um, what else now? You go into your gateways. I added this gateway already. So you need to um, add a gateway ID. I'll just maybe add one here. One second. Add gateway. So your gateway ID will be just your unique identifier that you want to call it. Now the gateway UI is this number here. So you copy that over from the gateway onto here. You type in your gateway name. And you can enable authenticated connection. Uh, you can make it public or not. And then you press create gateway. Uh, I need, yeah, I need this. Sorry, so I've got, uh, it will probably complain because I've got one already. And I need to select the frequency plan. Sorry about that. And it says, yeah, I've already got one, but this is, this is because I already had created it. Um, so, once you've got here, here, it says disconnected. So what you need to go is to go into your uh, gateway interfaces again. You need to type in your uh, server URI. This must include the WSS prefix there. You add the port 8887. You select TLS server authentication and client token. And then you have to get this long certificate and that comes from the, if, if you go to the documentation on the thing stack, you will see a section about the, the keys. 
So this is the LNS server certificate. You need to click here. You need to select the minimal certificate list. You download it, and then you get a file that looks like this. You need to copy all of that text over and paste it on to this trust to the trust section there. Finally, you have to go into API keys on the thing stack. You have to add an API key. You have to grant individual rights. This tells the, the thing stack that you can add the gateway and you get a, a key from this. So API key, copy that. Say so, yeah, I have copied the key. Then you go into this token se section on the gateway. You add this text here, authorization colon space bearer, and you paste your token here. Press save and apply. It will re re kind of restart the service. And there we go, the gateway is now connected. And you can go back to the gateway and check the system log. So this tells you that you can check if there's any error. There's some, there's always like some small things, but nothing. It's just warnings, I believe. And there you go, your gateway is now connected to the things uh, stack and you're ready to send data. Any kind of questions?